If you want to become a faster runner, you need to stay injury free. But new research just completely flipped our understanding of how running injuries happen. And this changes everything about how you should train to avoid injuries. My name is Nicholas. I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist, and former professional triathlete. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how much running is too much according to the largest study ever done on running related injuries. That way, you can stay consistent, run faster, run longer and avoid those annoying injuries. So let's just get straight to it. A huge study from Osh University followed over 5,200 runners across 87 countries for 18 months. And what they found was honestly shocking. You see, for years, there were two golden rules for increasing running volume. The first one is the 10% rule. This rule states that we should not increase our total weekly volume week over week by more than 10% if we want to stay injury free. But recent scientific reviews have found that this rule does not hold up in real life. Take this scientific review from 2022 for example. They found that current evidence does not consistently link running related injuries with specific training parameters or recent changes in training parameters. Or put in plain English the 10% rule is not valid. That brings us to the second rule that most people follow for increasing running volume. You see, millions of runners around the world rely on their GPS watches to tell them how much it is safe to run. Most of these watches use an algorithm called the acute to chronic workload ratio. But Here's the crazy part. Not only did the study of the 5200 runners found that there is a specific correlation between specific running volumes and injury, they also found that the acute to chronic workload ratio did not predict injuries at all. In fact, it was never even created for runners in the first place. So millions of runners are getting advice every single day from their watches that doesn't just not help them avoid injuries, but could actually increase their injury risk. If you're anything like me, when I first read that study, you're probably wondering, well, if we can't trust that, then what do we do? The study found something pretty interesting. Let me paint you a picture. Have you ever gone out for a run feeling great and then you decide to just go a bit longer and you come home, you feel like you're leveled up, but within a day or two, you sort of feel these aches in your shin or in your knees or in your hips. It feels unfair, random, like bad luck. But according to the research, it's not bad luck. It's math. They found that most running related injuries does not happen gradually like we used to think. They actually happen suddenly and usually within one single run. This completely rewires the way we should think about injury risk. It's not this slow buildup we can feel coming. It's like stepping on a landmine that you did not know was there. In fact, they found that whenever a runner increased a single run by more than 10% compared to the longest run they did in the last 30 days, their injury risk dramatically spiked. They made three critical discoveries. First, that increasing distance by just 10 to 30% led to a 64% higher injury risk. Second, that a 30 to 100% increase boosted injury risk by 52%. And third, that running more than double your recent longest distance shot up injury risk by a massive 128%. What this means is that our injury risk doesn't just increase linearly, it's sky rockets as we increase the volume. And it happens in silence. You don't feel it coming until it's too late. Based on these findings, we can use a new guideline designed specifically for runners based on their massive data set. It could work like a traffic light. Green is up to a 10% increase in your single run volume compared to your longest run in the last 30 days, and that means you're good to go. Yellow is a 10 to 30% increase and means that you should be careful. Red is over a 30% increase and it means stop you're about to push it too far. Let me give you an example. Imagine your last run was 10 kilometers. Your next long run should ideally not be longer than 11 kilometers. If you push it to 12 or 13 kilometers, you're entering the yellow zone, which significantly increases your injury risk. If you push it straight to 20 kilometers, you're entering the red zone and you're putting yourself at a high risk of injury. 
But here's the real real. The study also found that progressions up to 10% are not necessarily safe either and carry a degree of risk. Although not statistically significant, a progression between 1% and 10% translated into an increased injury rate of 19%. So even if we play by the new rules, there's always some risk associated with trying to run more. But before you sell all your running shoes and tell your friends that running is dangerous, if we look past all the fancy scientific literature and terms, I think that it just makes a ton of sense. I mean, think about it. The more you run, the higher the risk of a running related injury becomes. I mean, isn't it obvious? If we put it to the other extreme and we never run, then virtually the risk of getting a running related injury is zero. But we also won't experience any of the amazing benefits of running, we won't get any better, and the alternative, meaning we don't move at all, is way worse. Here's the brutal truth. Running injuries is a numbers game, and so is running performance. The difference between getting faster and getting sidelined is consistency. I mean, we can't improve if we're constantly hitting restart. So what can we actually do right now to reduce injury risk? Instead of worrying about weekly mileage like we did in the past, certainly I have, we need to focus on single run volume. That means that we need to keep that single run progression under control. If you can, don't let any single run exceed 10% longer than your long longest run in the past 30 days. That's the new golden rule. But it's more than just a rule. It's a change in mindset. It's about respecting where our body is today and not what we wish it was. And I've seen countless runners break down and miss out on race day because they just thought that more was better. And I know this rule can seem impossible to follow sometimes. But we know that if we want to get better, then consistency is the only way to get faster. Will there be times where I break this rule myself? abso freaking lutely But at least now I know the risk. And when I read the study, I immediately thought, are there any exceptions to this rule? And I think there is. In my experience, runners who've built up mileage consistently over months or years, if they have a setback, they can come back faster. Meaning we can do slightly bigger jumps safely. But even then, careful progression and regular recovery weeks are crucial if we don't want to get injured. And this is where individualization comes in. Some runners adapt quickly and some just need more patience. Factors like age, sleep, training history and previous injuries still play a huge role. So you should still listen to your body's signals. But now you're probably wondering, does this mean that weekly mileage does not matter anymore? The study found no relationship between running volume and running related injuries for the week to week ratio. But no matter how you put it, in my experience, increasing your volume by a ton in a short time frame usually does not lead to anything good. In any case, the goal should be consistency, not sudden overload. So how do we safely build our mileage long term? Term. Follow the 10% single run rule consistently. Regularly schedule easier weeks to let your body fully recover. Use cross training and strength training to build resilience. And pay close attention to other recovery signals like sleep, mood, stress, and even HRV. And I know the obvious question is, so do we need to be hyper cautious all the time? Not exactly. If you're in a block of consistent great training with good nutrition, proper sleep, and you just feel great, then you can absolutely just push it a bit more. And I think it can be totally fine to do some gradual progressions. The key is to make those jumps strategically and not emotionally. I always ask my athletes, are you doing this because it makes sense for the plan or are you doing it because you're chasing a feeling? And remember, injury risk isn't just about distance. Things like sudden changes in intensity or now you're running on grass instead of running on pavement or vice versa, or you're running in a group or you're running alone, all of these things can add up to that added volume. It's not just more miles, it's different miles too. When in doubt, here's a quick checklist that I use before every long run. Have you slept well in the past three nights? Are you injury and pain-free right now? Was your longest run in the past 30 days shorter than 30% of the run that you're about to go on? Are you feeling mentally and physically excited for the run and not pressured to make up for missed runs? If you answer no to any of these, then stick to green zone increases. 
And if you want to really bulletproof your running, then strength training is a non-negotiable. Research consistently shows that runners who include two sessions a week of heavy or explosive strength training not only get injured less, but actually get faster. Think of it as adding armor to your body. But if the algorithm that GPS watches use to recommend training does not work, then does that mean they are completely useless? Not at all. They are great for tracking pace, distance, and overall consistency. Just don't rely solely on what an AI algorithm tells you is the right way to run today. If you want to prevent injuries, that is. Remember, tech is a tool, not a coach just like it's always been. And if all of this feels overwhelming, then remember the pros get this wrong too. I've made every mistake you can imagine. The secret isn't to be perfect, it's to keep learning and keep showing up and keep trying to get better. And staying injury free means more days to train and more days to get better and more days to learn. So how much running is too much? Most running related injuries happen in a single run and not gradually over time. So it's not about weekly volume as much as it's about single run volume. Increasing your single run distance by more than 10% compared to your longest run in the past 30 days significantly increase your injury risk. To decrease your injury risk, use the simple traffic light model instead. Current GPS algorithms are not reliable for keeping us injury free. But here's the thing, even if you get your injury prevention perfect, then you're still leaving a ton of speed and endurance on the table if you miss this next step. Because the fastest runners in the world, they're not just consistent, they train smarter in a way that almost nobody else does. But I want to teach you how, so no matter if your goal is a sub 60 minute 5k or sub 2 hour and 10 minute marathon, you can use these same principles to get better. So check out this video where I show you how to improve your VO2 max twice as fast as normal training.